Hello, it's showtime. Hi, friends. Happy Friday night. So I hope you guys had a wonderful week. I always should pause for a minute because I know for uh, you guys watching live, it takes a second for this to go live for you watching after the fact. I'm just talking the whole time. So hello, hello, hello. Happy Friday night to my friends on the YouTubes and on the Facebooks. Uh, very happy to see you here. Hello, Natalie. Hi, Catherine. How are you, Stacy? Hi, Pam, Beth. Hello, hello, friends. How you doing? Love my shirt. Thank you. Old Navy. It's a lovely one from Old Navy, but I wore it to match my beautiful earrings. So I'll talk about those in a minute. It's always opposite. So eek, look at my pretty earrings. So I picked the top to match my earrings tonight. So I have to say that, but uh, hi, Ellen, how are you? And Mary, and I saw somebody was brand new here tonight. So a uh, welcome. And hola, Ada, how are you? Hola, hola, como esta? Um, very happy. Oh, look at a couple of my friends from Puerto Rico. So Puerto Rico. Um, so very happy to see you here. Uh, hi, Joe. Thank you for, so anyone who is, has joined the Gina Livy train with me, I had to spill the tea this week. So what that is, is they invited me on to talk about my journey and my weight loss. I'm at 25 pounds, very excited about that. And so I went on and, and just kind of gave us this boom bah <laughs> pep talk that, you know, don't quit. It's worth it. Just keep going. So thank you. Um, very excited to have done that, even though it's a lot putting yourself out there like that. But hey, how's it any different than all of these Fridays? I laugh because I'll tell you guys right off the get go. I was doing something looking for um, a past class for somebody who had... Uh, bought a kit for one of my older classes or access only and I needed to find the YouTube video and I happened to just see thumbs down on one of my videos and it's going to happen I know but what really is painful is when there's thumbs down for a bonus card class that you spend five additional hours teaching in addition to the other I don't know, 15 hours you put in of class teaching. All I have to say is when you're tempted to hit that thumbs down, I think just move on and find something to smile about because if you, it does hurt people's feelings. Like I'm, I, I figured like, look at on these Friday nights makes me laugh. If you want a thumbs down, that's awesome. As I give four hours of my time for free, right? Cause I love to be here. So it's not a bad thing, but just one of those things. If you don't have anything nice to say, find something nice to say or move on to something else. If I'm not your cup of tea, I'm sure somebody out there is going to be putting some kind of free content out there that you love. But you know, it was one of those that I was like, really? I'm fine. I know it's going to come and it's not something I wasn't crying in my cornflakes or anything. But it was one of those where I was like, wow, that stings a little bit. I expect them on these because just anybody can see it. But on a class one that is a private video thumbs down when I went on and did like bonus cards that one stings a little bit but you know anyway so we'll we'll just move forward and it's okay you don't have to do this because my whole thing is I just love to be here and um if I'm not doing something you enjoy tonight it's okay either just stay for the company and the community or um, I'm sure you can find another video to watch or something. I know a lot of you are in classes, but it just, it's one of those where it's like, oh, you know, you get a tougher skin, but sometimes they still can sneak in the needle in there, but it's all good. Anyway, yeah, projecting miserable lives in their parent, <laughs> parents' basements, maybe, I don't know. But I always feel like when it's in a class setting that they're my friends that are telling me that I suck. And that hurts, right? So it's, yeah, it, it hurts. Don't look at them. And I don't normally, I just happened to see that one and just, it took me off, you know, um, took me, what is, I just lost the saying, whatever. It took me by surprise. But anyway, I'm excited that for every single one of you who is joining me tonight, who's joining me after the fact, tonight is going to be fun. I am so excited because I kind of put it out there on the Vicky Boot and Creative community. What do you want to do tonight? Because the month of March is just using Vicky Booten mediums because a lot of you guys are collectors of fine scrapbook product and you don't 
necessarily use them. And I always want to encourage you to use your mediums regardless of who creates them because they will dry out or they won't last forever. This one will last forever. We're using tonight my um, the new watercolor set that came out with, I, I think it said color study, but I don't think it shipped until Fernwood. But when you see it out in the store online, it looks like that. So um, these are not, here's the whole thing that you guys will, they're inexpensive watercolor. It's not real watercolor paint. Anything that you see like in these dry chalky um, palettes is more of like a, a, um, a gouache type paint or more of a tempera paint. So as a bonus for anybody who wants to add a set to one of their upcoming orders, if you have one of the pre-orders or you're planning on order anything, I put them on my website for $7 Canadian. So tonight, maybe you don't have them already and I have about 40 of them here that I haven't even listed in my store. So somebody had said, hey, I have that watercolor set. Will you use it? And I'm like, perfect. But here's the fun thing. I'm gonna show you how to use these inexpensive watercolors that it's okay if you mix the colors together and do lots of fun things to make, we're gonna do five backgrounds tonight. And I just cut, cut extra for, I'm going to make five card bases as well. So it'll be fun. So I don't know, I'm, I'm um, missing all of the comments. Pamela, I'm so tired and hope I don't get COVID too. Many around me have COVID, I hope so. Uh, I hope that you don't, I don't hope so that you get it. I hope Pamela that you don't lots of rest, keep your fluids up. I've been pumping the vitamin C, so even if I do happen to get it, it will be a very mild case. So just make sure you take care of yourself. So hi, Nicole. And Nicole, it's her day up on uh, the blog as my design team. And did you see the beautiful layout she made? If you haven't, make sure you check it out on her Instagram and on our private community page at uh, Vicki Booten Creative Community on the Facebooks. But look at these earrings, like uh, the camera's opposite. So these are from my friend Keisha. You know Keisha from our community, aren't they beautiful? And her um, jewelry company is called Peppered With Love. And she sent me three different pairs. So you're gonna see them popping up, but I love them. I love them. So thank you, Keisha, for thinking about me. Um, they're beautiful. They're very light, and I picked my top to go with my Jetson earrings. Aren't they fun? I love them. So thank you, friend. And make sure you check her out on Instagram, Peppered with Love. And uh, very nice. I don't know if she's here tonight, but they're beautiful. Hello, Teresa. Hi, Jill. Positive thoughts always when watching you. Right? Like, I just look at it and go, there's enough crap going on in this world. Like, we need to think of good things, put good out there and good will come back to you. So I love it, but very, very thoughtful. You guys send me always some of the nicest stuff and I really, really do appreciate it. So tonight, oh, and last week I did finish, I haven't put photos on it because I still have to print them because I am gonna use the blue photos of me with the paintbrush stuff, just a second. But very excited that one, I don't think I took the backing off the foam dots, but that this layout, remember, if you watched last week, I was struggling a bit, but now I freaking love it. After I really worked through what I was struggling with whoop, and finished that one. So I saw a lot of you posted beautiful projects that you made with last week's live. Love how this one turned out. So thank you for sharing. And I finished the card. And remember, I wasn't sure what to do with it. I put some gold, oops, this side, gold stars. And those ink dots using the um, Vicky Booten uh, gold glaze turned out really well. So it all turned out. I just have to put some photos on there, right? Just need to put some photos on. But tonight, um, we're going to have some fun. Five backgrounds. So I'm going to flip the camera around. Any questions before I flip it around? Oh, and... Um, I did end up posting the, have you seen the new 49th and Market uh, Spectrum Sherbert? Sherbet. I always want to say Sherbert. Does anybody else put an R in there that doesn't belong? I always say Sherbert, but it's Sherbet. 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 Um, but I did post that up. Um, so there will be a bunch of us doing that uh, all day 
layout class using that beautiful collection from 49th and Market. So make sure if you were kind of on the fence or you didn't even know about it, they go and check out, out on vickybooten.com. Uh, there's only a few kits left and when they're gone, they're gone. I'm not ordering anymore. And uh, I put my order in with the company. Um, there's no R in there, right? It's sure bet, B-E-T. But I always say Sherbert. I don't know. Am I alone? Sherbert. But there's a whole bunch of fun stuff. And lots of you um, ordered that. And it's beautiful. It's like rainbows and butterflies. So it's right up my alley. So I am going to prep a bunch of layouts. So I have a plan. And then we're going to sit on a Sunday and literally just do at a minimum of 10 pages from everything that is in that little kit. And then for any of you guys that are just shopping it on your own and you want it uh, access only, I'm going to post it for like 15 bucks Canadian. It's going to be cheap and you can come and spend the Saturday that I think it's a Sunday. I think I put it up there on Sunday. Oh, look at Keisha. Keisha is here. Look at my earrings. I love them. Right. I love them. So uh, very excited about that. But I wanted to share that in case you didn't see it. Make sure you check that out if it's something you're interested in. So any questions? Before I flip it around, um, it's not available here until April. It's not available here till April either. Um, but I put it on as a pre-order. It's up as a pre-order. And then um, I see for my Australian and New Zealand friends, I think, I think they're um, Natalie and, um, uh, oh my goodness, if you're out there, Michelle, oh my goodness, I had like a little brain blip. Um, but it's so excited. Um, I'm so excited. I was reading and trying to speak at the same time and it never works. But I'm going to flip the camera. We're going to do some fun things. Um, yes, I think, right? Love that range. It is so beautiful, right? Yes, Ness Nat has it in stock and I have ordered it too. Woo, woo. So it's going to be fun. And that's like I said, I just added... If you guys want to join me and you can use anything, it's just going to be a whole bunch of layouts. So it'll be super fun. Natalie is here too. And so is Michelle. So very exciting. Um, and no, I do not do the Wordle. It's, I just don't, I don't have time for anything other than what is uh, in my life. But uh, yes, Jill, I am planning on a Tim Holtz April and I have a ton of stuff I'm going to be adding. Actually, um, one of the orders. So it's it just going to be random stuff. And then I'm literally just going to play with things that I want to play with. I'm going to play with the new wax. I have uh, the pearl. Um, I have the pearl alcohol inks. I have the pearl crayons. And I'm going to put a whole bunch of it up in my shop as well. So uh, you guys be watching for that and different papers and it's just going to be fun. And, and I might even do a little bit of altered art rather than photo based, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So yes, the month of April is going to be that. Um, does 49th have a new lavender collection too? They might, Lori. I don't know. I just got caught so caught up in the sherbet, the spectrum sherbet that I wasn't sure. Um, I'm not sure. So going to do that. Uh, just got the foundry wax and saltwater taffy. I love it. Yeah. There's going to be so much fun. I bought my first, I'm missing all of the, the conversation and it's my favorite part. I missed it. Oh, I bought my first Vicky all day class and I'm so excited. We're going to have fun. You've never done one with me before Keisha. I didn't know that. Uh, we have a lot of fun, so it'll be good. And um, I know Irene's out there. Hello, my friend. I hope tonight is a better night for you. And I know Irene keeps reminding me I have to do my giveaways on the Facebook group for uh, Fernwood. And I'll do that tomorrow when I wrap up my giveaway for the Pink Fresh and $25 gift certificate to my store. Um, I will do all of it, post them all tomorrow, okay? So make sure that if you did the Fernwood weekend with the kit, that you check on the board tomorrow because I will post um, some winners with gift certificates to my shop. So there, I've, I've talked about all the things. Let's, let's, flip. let's flip the camera. Let's do the things, right? So here we go. There we go. So tonight um, is going to be fun. Do the giveaways include the UK? Um, yes. Not for Fernwood because it's only the giveaways are for people who purchase. Oh, the class kits. 
Um, yes, I will. I will look at the list as well for um, UK and Australia because you can use your $25 um, gift certificate towards access, right? So yes, I will totally include everybody who, um, even if you bought kits um, from Natalie and Michelle, okay? So yes, I will do that. Yay! So let's see. Hello, Kari. How you feeling, my friend? Um, I'm just taking this thing down on my side because it throws shadow on uh, where we're working. Is the class tailored to scrapbooking or some other things too? Which class, Kathy? It's mostly scrapbooking and card making because it's the majority of the people who watch. Now I do all kinds of arts, arts. I do all kinds of art, but um, the majority of the people who watch are scrapbookers, mini book makers and card makers. So it's pretty much what I focus on. But the backgrounds tonight, you can use really for anything, canvas, anything. Uh, crafting with your kids, you totally could use these paints, right? Um, so what was the question? Did you check scrapbook.com last I saw? They had, oh, you guys are talking about something. I'm not sure. And then I saw another question. Okay, if you had a question, ask me now because I'm looking at the screen and I don't know if I missed it. Um, we're a group of ladies crafting together and following you at the same time. I love it, Nadia. Very exciting. Um, so tonight, a lot of you, and even if you don't have mine, I would not be surprised if you have a set of these paints, right? In some kind of fashion. Now, um, they don't retail for a lot of money because they are not watercolor paint. If you were going to buy a set of watercolor paint, it would cost a lot more than $9, $10, right? Like a good set of watercolor um, would be a lot pricier than that. So just know that these are inexpensive tempera paints. Now, this is one of those things like uh, we were looking at possibly doing a second set of more neutral colors. We're only doing one of these because it's, you know, with my journey um, that a lot of my mediums are like one and done, right? So what ends up happening that uh, we do some mediums that I'm like, oh, it'll be fun. And you're going to see why tonight. These are fun. We're going to do some fun things with it. Um, but it is not like a high end. I, I saw a comment. Somebody did a review on them that said they were cheap. And I'm like, but they're $8. I they're not like a good high-end watercolor set, right? So um, it will be, it is what it is, but they're fun. Wait till you see the backgrounds that I um, am going to do with it. Can you use uh, old watercolor brushes? Do you mean the ones, uh, Catherine, with the uh, reservoir in them? Is that what you mean? And then what are we looking for? What is somebody looking for that I didn't see that you guys are trying to... Uh, direct them to is there anything i can help with but yes definitely for anybody who didn't get these and say you ordered a sweet rush pre-order or you ordered the um new spectrum uh sherbert sherbet and you want a set i put them up on my site vickybooten.com for seven bucks canadian so if you order them uh, and you have another kit that is a pre-order, all I will do is um, refund the shipping and I'll just add it in your box, okay? So just, yeah, take a look. But tonight the focus is on this because a lot of you bought it and probably haven't even opened it yet, right? I All of my uh, watercolor crayons, my art crayons are all up on my website. I restocked all of them. Cause I, or I cleaned it out. Everything that was left, I've bought them. Right. So, um, I have definitely, uh, restocked all of it. Foundations, paper, everything. They were the pre, uh, filled with your colors. Uh, you can use them, but just know it, they're pure dye. And we're going to use our fingers tonight and you will look like somebody ran your hands over with a truck. So just know with those, I love the watercolor markers, but they were super pricey, right? So what happened with the watercolor markers is um, a lot of people look at the price and go, oh, that's a lot of money. But they were magic because the pigment was so intense in them that you need only need a drop of it. I never use them directly out of the marker, okay? I never 
use them directly out of the marker because they are uh, heavily pigmented. So you could use them tonight, Catherine, but maybe don't do the finger painting we're going to do because, well, unless you're okay with your hands really being dyed for a couple of days. Okay. So let's talk about what we're doing tonight. You need some, I love the watercolor markers too. And I would do more colors in them if uh, people were open to paying, like, I think, what do they retail for? Like $40 for a box because it's all pigment, right? Do you have stencil brushes in your store? I don't, but they are coming, Keisha. They're not going to come out till the fall, but um, we have repackaged them to one regular size brush and they are coming out with my new release that is all finished and off being uh, manufactured um, for the fall. There's so much in that. Oh my goodness. It's, you guys are going to love that collection. Uh, you're covered in VB colors anyway. Well, I love it. I love it. So yeah, they're coming. It's coming. Okay. So you need some plastic wrap, whatever you call it, where you live, right? Cling wrap, saran wrap, whatever. You need some of this. We're going to use this tonight. Uh, you need a stencil that is, um, doesn't have too much open space. Okay. So any stencil you want, it needs to have kind of like, see how this is kind of 50, 50 open space and stencil. So you want to check this out or you want something like this. Okay. You want to check this out and then you need a foam brush and I am using a number 10 round paintbrush. You need a bigger size round brush because wait till I show you the one we're going to do tonight. And you're going to be super excited because it's like if you guys like the drawing or the um, hand drawing the flowers and stuff, watch, watch, right? Watch, it's coming. So let me show you what I worked on. And I whipped these up really quick. So my idea is tonight, let's just do the backgrounds. And then you can, we can come back and we can do some layouts on there. And then I will do a layout that I share as well this week with one of the backgrounds. So, oh, and this stencil is one of my exclusive ones, right? So it's not through American Crafts. It's Crazy Grid. And um, it's up on vickyboot.com. If you haven't purchased it or if you're interested in the end, that's where this one is, okay? Because I didn't list it. So look at this one. So... Another thing that was fun is you guys, like a lot of you own gesso and you're always like, what do I do with it? So tonight, guess what? I'm going to use this gesso with these to show you how I made it more of an opaque paint. So I have that. You need water as well, a cup of water, and you might have to change it as we go along. So we're going to do this background. Isn't that fun? That's the first one we're going to do because it needs some time to dry. And this is... A number 10, number 10 round. If you have a number eight, it'll be okay as well, right? Um, and yes, it's Jose's birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, my friend. It's very exciting that someone made dinner for you. And then all of your friends here are going to wish you a happy birthday. Uh, hello, Adam Westwood. Guess what I did today? I booked my flights to England and I booked my hotel for my five-day stay after. And I was talking to my friend Shamel, which if you guys do not know who Shamel is, go and check her out because she does lots of lives and fun stuff. I love her. Um, I had said to her, should I stay in one hotel in Shoreditch or should I split it between two different areas in London? And I booked it. And then she said, you should stay at one hotel. And then I, but I'm very excited because I picked two different boutique hotels in England. Wait for the pictures I'll be sharing. Because it's going to be an experience. Adam, you need to come in for a day trip. I don't know how long that is for you, but you should come spend the day with me um, in uh, London. Wouldn't that be fun? Get ready. Wear your walking shoes. It's going to be an adventure. So this is one we're going to do with a saran wrap. You can pick any color palette that you want. Okay? Um, we're doing this one. Look how fun this is. With our finger. We're finger painting. Because I wanted easy backgrounds that you do not have to buy super expensive tools. So this is going to be super fun. <gasps> Look at this one. Foam brush, rainbow background. And you can do it in any, you could do any color palette. But I love this. It's going to be fun. Stencil. And this is fun, I think, for a background. You could do with cards, whatever you want to do. But uh, you also could totally put a couple photos on here. So that's another one. 
And then, oh my goodness, this one we're going to do tonight. And this is why you need a round brush. But we're using temper paints. And I want to show people that all of your mediums don't have to be high-end mediums to get good results. So for the person who posted as a feedback that this was cheap <laughs> and they hated it, I hope they come and watch this video because I can still show you that even if it's not expensive, we can do amazing things with it tonight. So this is the last one we're going to do and you're going to watch how quick. Um, foam brush, a wide flat brush, Michelle. But definitely next time you're out, make sure you get yourself a little bag of foam brushes. You're going to love this. Yeah, release. You're going to love this. Did I say it right? Yeah, release. Yeah, release. Yeah, release. Rodriguez Perez. So Natalie was helping me with rolling the R and I can't do it. My tongue just doesn't roll R's when I speak in the Spanish, uh, speak Spanish words. I just can't do it. So you need backgrounds to do your bases. Now, somebody had asked, like, when do we opt for um, gesso? You could try gesso, uh, gessoing cardstock tonight if you want to do that. Is it blurry? Is it just your phone? It could be your phone, Monique. And what you need to do is, are you watching? You're watching on YouTube. So take and hover over the screen and you will see a gear, a gear on YouTube. Press that gear and change your quality to 720. So anyone watching on YouTube, if it's blurry, you just need to change the quality, right? So just go and hover over the gear and then click on it and then just change your quality to 720p and that makes a huge difference, okay? I try to roll my R's. I really want to be good at that, but I can't. Um, yes, when and Shamel, is, Shamel and I are getting together because she's shooting a wedding and has other things that she's doing. Uh, so we are going to, um, we are going to, uh, get together on the Tuesday and go on an adventure and I'm going to pay her to do a photo shoot because I want a Chamel photo shoot. So, uh, Marvine, um, I print all of my photos. So, um, I don't, I, I never watch for if it's acid free. So I'm the worst one to, to ask. If you have one of those markers, you could check it, but I don't put my photo directly on the paint either. So I'm the worst one to ask. What a terrible scrapbooker, right? Um, so do I think it would hurt your photos? I don't think so. Um, but I wouldn't use like maybe that one photo you have of your dad when he was six years old, right? Print them and then put it on there, right? Serenity is in the house. Hello, my friend. I am so happy to see you back and hanging out with me. I love it. So let's do the things. So the first thing we're going to do is the saran wrap one. Um, do you want me to do the same color palette or a different color palette? If you want me to do purples or something else, just lay it on me, friends, and I will do whatever. So we're going to, you know what song just popped in my head? You know the one? Lay it on the line. That popped in my head. I don't even know why because I don't even think it's like my genre of music, but that's what popped in my head. Late to the party, never late, never too late, Julianne Bennett. Uh, so are you ready to do the things? Yep, the leaves are last because this one we wanna do first because it has to sit and dry. So um, Jennifer said purple, so let's go for it. I'm gonna do purple. I'm not gonna do rainbow for this one, but you can, Kathy. 100% can do rainbow. Just remember, because this is very wet and the colors are going to kind of blend a little bit together, that be very cautious of not putting like orange beside purple because you can make mud. Okay. So I'm going to go with purple. Does watercolor paper work too? It should, Nancy. You know, the only thing that will um, differ from with that is it has texture on it, right? Unless you're using a, a, a hot press that's smooth, but most watercolor paper will have texture. So you will have that um, already step one of texture technique with your watercolor paper, but you certainly can do, right? You can do. So we're going to use like some purples and pinks on this one. So you need, get ready, get your stuff prepared, a piece of saran wrap. And I'm going to do two. So do you want me to do rainbow on the card? I can do rainbow on the card. So I cut out pieces 
to do a card background as well. So while we're working, I'm going to do two. So we can come back and we can revisit the technique for my card makers and for my paper crafters. So I'm going to paint directly on my saran wrap. Okay. And you're going to find this is going to move fast tonight because we don't have to overthink it. And uh, we are using a stable, dry medium that we're just going to add water to. So it goes like, it's awesome. It's going to be so much fun. Are you ready? Have some paper towels handy because it's, it's a little bit messy. Yes, Shamel is a scrapbooker who lives in the UK and her son is Wonder Boy. And um, she posts lovely things and is a very traditional paper crafter. So if you love scrapbooking, you definitely want to check out Shamel. Lots of fun. Purple and turquoise. Okay. Is it Cherie or Sherry? Um, I'm going to say Cherie right now because I like that. So I'm going to do purple on this one. And then I'm going to do purple and turquoise on the card. Okay. So here we go. You open up your watercolor set. And we're going to use a foam brush because it's cheap. And that's my whole thing is that these are um, backgrounds that you can make on like a, a, a beer budget. It doesn't have to be champagne taste tonight. Okay. So what did we say? Purples. Okay. We're going to make some. All right. Because there's one purple in the set, but we can make purple just by mixing our reds and blues, right? So I don't even care if it gets messy in here. I'm just going to throw some pigment down on my cards, on my um, saran wrap. And then I'm going to mix some blue right in here because I can clean these right off. Don't even care if it mixes, right? Oh, look at that darker purple. I love that. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to throw and mix some gesso on it because I think the gesso gives it some tooth and more opacity. So we will mix, clean your brush or get a second brush and we're gonna mix some gesso right into this, okay? So I'm gonna rinse that off a little bit, squeeze my water out. And now I'm gonna go into this red and I'm gonna go into this blue. Let's see what color we get between these two and all I have to do is clean that off, right? Oh, I love it, okay? I'm gonna clean that. Put a little bit more of just the purple, maybe with some of that pink. Love it. Okay. Maybe some more blue. Okay. So see, it's all wet. Nice here. Rinse my foam brush out and you're gonna see I'll have to go and change my water I'll have to get up a couple times to change my water and now I'm gonna take just a little bit of gesso do you have to put gesso in here no I'm just showing you if you have gesso and you've never opened it or used it here's something you can do with it is this will add a little bit of chalkiness to your paints and then what we'll do see now where you can definitely see where that paint is Rinse in my brush, just so I don't transfer that color in there. And then I'm blending it in here. And I'm gonna go in because see, I've lost a little bit of my pigment, but after my gesso's down, I can go in here and I can put some more of the colors on top. I'll just clean my brush. And then we'll miss this. Okay, I'm just rinsing the gesso out of my brush. Don't even care. Uh, red and purple, red and purple. That's up here. Put a little bit more pigment down. Just purple. Purple and blue. Purple and blue. And this one's pretty dark. I might go in a little bit more purple and blue. Load that brush right up. A little bit more water, purple and blue. A little bit of pink. I love it. Okay, I'm happy with that. This does not have to be soaked, okay? 
Um, but if you want to throw, maybe yours is a little dry, just put a little bit of water so your pigments will move around. And then you're going to lift this and you're going to flip it on your page and you're going to smoosh. You need to have some pattern in here or you will not have any kind of um, smooshed background. Okay, so smoosh it draw, uh, pull lines, whatever you want to do. Okay. And then just set that aside to dry. And I'm going to quickly do the card now with a little bit of purple. And a little bit of, what do we want? Turquoise and purple. Okay. So let's put the gesso down first, just for fun. Gesso down first. Rinse it. What's the question? Why don't you put the, I'm going to put it down first now. And you can, because it's very watered down. But right, sometimes as I'm doing it, I'm like, well, I could have done that first. So you totally can. Okay. So let's go in with purple and I'm going to make a new kind of purple here. Rinse that. See, and this is this is why I didn't put the gesso down first. Guess what I do? I'm going to be mo putting my gesso into my paints. So that's why I would put the gesso down second, to be honest with you. Okay, purple. Oops. These um, foam brushes are so cheap. And this is a little bit green. But we can throw a little blue in it to make it turquoisey. Oh, I love it. Okay. And I'm going to just go with that. Now, watch what I'm going to do differently. So now I'm going to lift this and I'm going to pull my saran wrap so it is in like strips. I'm going to put it down like that. Oh, I love it. And don't mess sometimes. Like when you see a good thing happening, just kind of go with it. So now that's for my card. Okay. I'm just going to leave that to dry. I like, see those like little lines. And then it has to dry because if you lifted it off right now, all the paint would just go. Pfft. So it needs to soak into that paper a little bit. It is white gesso, Robin because I'm only using Vicky Booten product just because I'm trying to help people who have bought it, figure out how to use it. So um, in my collection, there's only clear gesso. I mean, pardon me, only white traditional gesso. Okay. How long does it take to dry? I get very impatient. Um, it will be ready by the time we're done our fifth, fifth um, background. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. And now I'm going to try to get my lid on. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna switch my water quick, okay? Because there's, see, it's milky gesso. It's grape, grape ice cream. So just gonna change my water. Oh, that color is so pretty. It's went down the drain though. I'm going to actually bring, oh, no, I didn't need two before. I'm not going to get two now. Okay, so there is one background. And now we're going to do the rainbow one. Okay, the rainbow one. It'll be very fast, Jill. And you want to know why? I don't have a ton of moisture on there. It is um, not a medium that takes a long time to dry. And um, it all soaks into the paper. So uh, can you heat set it? No, because you have plastic wrap wrap on top of it right i did not watch bridgerton 2 yet already because rich is going through number one he started watching it on his own so he could watch it with me isn't that romantic so romantical so yes so no you wouldn't heat set it because you'd uh, melt your plastic wrap so just leave it just leave it alone this is one of those ones to just leave okay question what size are your card bases uh four by five and then I can trim it down. So I just kind of faked it because it was a last minute decision right before we went live. So I couldn't think of what I needed. Remember, fake card maker, 
right? So it'll be good. All right, so rainbow, let's do a rainbow background. Um, so I'm going to start with yellow and work my way through. And foam brush is magic here. Watch how fast this is going to be. So you could sew on this when you're done. You could cut it into pieces. So you just want to take a wet foam brush and uh, load up your foam brush. It's wet, right? And you're just going to drag that across and build your yellow. With this one, I'm going to totally go in and just add second of pigment. And I can always come back when it dries if I really want to make that color bolder. And I can put a second layer on. But for now, right, just get my yellow down. If you drip on here and make a mess, it adds to the charm. Rinse my brush out. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to go into my orange now. And again, just go in, oh, and I kind of go right over top of a little bit of the yellow because then they start to bleed in together. I love it. Okay, cleaning out a little bit of that orange, but by us working down, um, we totally can make a rainbow. Now, I'm not gonna pick all of these colors. I'm just gonna pick one red and then I'll go into a pink, okay? Well, I'm gonna do pink first. I'm going to clean that up a little bit just because it has some purple in it. So I'm just wiping it off on my paper towel. Okay, here we go. Pink. And now just go in and put your pink in a little bit of the orange. It is fun if the colors kind of bleed together. Okay. Rinse my brush. And now I'll go into one of the reds. Just pick one of the reds. See, it's bleeding in. I love it. Uh, if you don't like that, just control the water. Don't put as much water down, okay? You can leave. I like that kind of little space there. So I'm going to just go with it. I'm going to leave that like that. Okay, rinse. And now I'm going to go into my purple. Is anyone playing along with me tonight? See, in this pink, I might go in and put a little bit more on after. But there's my purple. And then we'll go into blue. Okay. And then turquoise and then green. And you can put two shades of the green at the bottom if you want to. So I'm going to go in here now. Pick your blue. I'm going to go with this one. Right? Super easy. These backgrounds are super easy. And that's... The whole intention for tonight is that you can whip these backgrounds off in no time flat, and then you've really just made your own custom scrapbook paper, right? So you can use these for backgrounds. So let's make the turquoise. I'm going to mix this green here with a little bit of the lighter blue just to make it a little bit more turquoisey because that one is a little bit on the green side, okay? And this is very soft and subtle. If you want it to be darker, you would let this first layer dry and then you could paint a second layer on top. Oh, I love that. Ooh, I love it. And know when to walk away. And now let's go in with green. So I'm gonna pick this dark green in the bottom corner. And then I think I will do the lime green, one row of that limey green as well. And the limey green. Because then that ties back into the yellow, right? And some of these ones that are a little bit lighter, you might just want to build your pigment and you can always come back in, right? But look how pretty. Very easy, right? Can you whip and nay nay, right? Watch me whip, watch me nay nay, watch me whip, whip, and watch me nay nay. I will show you that one. Dry. So if you want it darker, just put some more pigment in. But look how these dry. Oh, it's 
so soft and pretty, right? So soft and pretty. And I have to tell you something. Um, what I notice is your these don't last long. Like it's already broken. And that's why I think my color is not as bold as it was the first time I did it because I don't get the pressure on the brush like I did. But look, I just built up that orange a little bit. I'm going in rather dry. And we can put a little bit of this pink down. If I want a little bit more pigment, I love that. A little bit of the red down right so all I did is went in there with a, a fairly dry brush so it's not bleeding into the color underneath maybe a little bit more of that orange go in with the light blue again so again remember friends brush is pretty dry it needs to be wet enough to pick up the pigment but you don't want it to be sopping wet because it will make a little bit of a mess. So I'm gonna go in with the turquoise, but we have to make it. So just put the light blue and the green. Oh, super simple, right? Sorry, I have to put my arm across because where my water is. Uh, the darker green, brush is dry. Well, not dry, but not sopping wet. So I don't want it to bleed at this point. Oh, more of that. But see how it's me? So it, um, they really are one use brushes. And this is still wet. So I'm not going to put any more. I'll come back. Too wet. Too wet. Are you know me? Right? Too wet. So I'll set this side to dry. Don't tip it if it's really wet unless you want all your colors to bleed into each other. And like I said, this I can't come and build more depth on because it's too wet. So the paint's all just floating into what's already on there. But look at the little streaky marks you get when you let it dry a little bit for the second. Okay, let's move on because I told you tonight you're going to be so impressed with how quickly we work. So I'm going to pick. Oh, I do we want a card? Yeah, want to do a quick card background? This one, I'm going to end up making a... Um, so look at. let's try a different brush. Because some of you guys didn't have a foam brush. Now my water's pretty dirty. Let's see what kind of a mess I can make. Um, so look at. Burp, 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 burp. But do you see? It doesn't carry the same amount of water. So you're not going to get the same result. The foam brush is kind of majestical in what it does. So you are not going to get that same result with the a paintbrush. So I want you to see what's happening here because you really can see the difference. I'm not going to put pink on this one. I'm just going to go with red. Okay. Purple. Maybe. Maybe I'll put a pink. We'll see. Let's look. But do you see what I'm saying? You are not going to get the same effect we did with the foam brush. It's just not the same. Oh, yeah. I like that pink. But I moved it. I put the pink. And I'm going to do some things. Just crazy things. But my water, look at, oh. Don't do those crazy things with dirty water because then you just get dirty results. So let's pretend that that didn't happen. Pretend Vicky didn't do that. Okay. And now I'm going to, what color? Blue. Because you will see the chalkiness of this paint because it is what it is, right? Ooh, but look at look at that kind of fun wicking. So sometimes just embrace what you're getting. I'm just going to embrace it. Let's make a turquoise. But I'm going to also put a navy strip in here. So I'm going to do the turquoise. Oh, I love it. I'm going to do a band of this dark blue just for fun. Oh, I like that too. Okay. 
And now the green. I'm adding a little bit of lime to it, just to make it a little greener. And we will finish with that limey one just for fun. And then I can make a slim line out of this. So I'm just totally leaving this to dry. So, oh, can we do something just for fun? Let's see what happens if I put down some saran wrap. I think it's wet enough. I think it should work. Let's see what happens when the pigment is on the paper first and then we put the saran in there. It might work and it might not, but we will see. Okay. I didn't mean to have that big gob mess there. Let's see if I can, Vicky can fix the mess she made. Okay, we're going to go with it. We'll see what we get. It might be good, it might not, but that's what Friday nights are all about. So I'm going to set that and let it dry. So we just co combined two techniques in that one, but doing it a little differently. Okay, are you ready for finger painting? Actually, let's do the next one first because it has that needs a little time to dry okay yay so we're gonna do the stencil one so the stencil one why you need a stencil that has a kind of even distribution of open space and stencil space is because we're gonna just put a whole bunch of freaking water right through it okay so we could do two ways, right? Two ways. You could do it um, with your foam brush and just paint through. Or you could do the um, saran wrap technique through the stencil. Or you could do the kissing technique through the stencil. I'm going to clean this because that's really is mud. What color do you want me to put down in a monochromatic? Do you want yellow, orange, pink? Do you want blues and greens? What do you want? This has to be something that we aren't mixing to secondary colors because we'll get mud. Now, if you like mud, you can totally do something earthier, right? You can do an earthier technique. I'm going to get a different foam brush too because that one is annoying me. They, these ones, they used to be foam brushes. You could go through, use them multiple times. And now they are um, blue and blues and green. What did, what was the first one? You want yellow, orange, pink? Because I did blue and green for the other one. So let's do um, yellow, orange, pink. Okay. Let's go for it. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take my foam brush and I'm going to make a yellowy concoction, okay? I don't want it too, too wet because you don't want it to uh, blend under too much, okay? And I'm going right around here. And I can also kind of like break it up and make a pattern outside. You could paint your stencil and you could stamp it if you wanted to. I'm going to paint my orange into my yellow too. Right, and we can totally kind of dab some pigment out here. I'm gonna go revisit the orange yellow again and make kind of a new shade between the two, a little tangerine magic in there, okay? And now I'm gonna go in with some pink. I want your technique to be loose. Just have fun with it, right? Just don't make it too wet under the stencil. Why? Because when you go to lift it, all your pigment is going to sink in. And we don't want that. Okay? So not too, too wet. And you can go in and drop some more. Okay? Now I'm going to go in and make... A kind of orangey red. I'm gonna mix those two together. 
So it's almost a salmony color. Just in that. Oh, don't let your stencil move like mine was just trying to do. Trickster. So you can do two things. If you're nervous with the amount of water that you have on here, I would recommend that you don't take your stencil up just yet. See what I was doing? Squeezing a little bit of watery joy onto my mat. Oh, I love this mess. I love this mess. Let's do a little yellow joy. Gonna mix a little pink into that red. Couple little dots of pink. Okay. Now this is a, a very wet mess, right? So if I lift this stencil off right now, what's gonna happen is it's gonna all kind of blend in. Do you want me to just go for it and show you? Or do you want me to leave it? Do you want me to lift this or do you want me to leave it? Because here's the thing. It's going to be different for everybody because depending on what paper you're using, some people's paper is going to be way more porous. So your medium is soaking right in. Because I'm using foundations, um, the water is sitting kind of on top. I'm just lifting a little bit because you totally could go in here if it's really wet. And we can lift a little bit of the pigment. And then, ooh, it's kind of cool. I'm putting the pattern of my paper towel in there. But I can also blend that out a bit if you don't like it. So do we want to leave it, lift it, leave it, leave it. The majority is leave it. But part of me wants to lift it. <laughs> Just to show you guys. Here, let me peek. Okay, I am going to lift. You don't have to but I love it. Now things we can do because it's my page um, and you can decide after you see this, I'm going to mist on here. I want it to bleed a little bit. So it's not that harsh white. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to mist a little bit of water just to soften some of the edges. You do not have to do this. Okay. And now we leave this to dry. Oh, I love it. How fun is that, right? So now you got to watch when you pick it up that you don't tilt it or it's going to all bleed down, although that could be cool, right? But I'm going to lift this and I'm going to put it over on the floor because it's very wet and I'm going to let it dry. Okay, see? Oh, how fun is that? <laughs> Do -do. Okay, it's on the floor and I'll try not to step in it. <laughs> what was the weird question? Um, that is weird. I know this is live, but I couldn't find it anywhere. You found me though, so yay. Okay, so depending on the color. So let's talk a little color theory for my friends that are going rogue. If you mix purple and orange together, they're two secondary colors, you will get a little bit more um, earthiness. So just kind of remember any secondary colors. So that would be purple, orange, greens. If you mix them together, you will get a little bit of an earthier effect or mud if you want rainbow. Okay. No cats around to walk through it. No, no, Jill. We're good. There's no cats here. And all my kids are doing other things. Now I'm excited. Let's finger paint. And then we're going to do the last one, which is, I think, what you guys are going to stick around for is we're going to paint the um, branches. It's going to be so much fun. Okay. So I have to get two more pages. So I did not do a card of that one. And I'm all right with that. I don't need to do a card of that one. I'm just pulling this apart. It's just easier. And grab two more. And we are going to do 
So do we want the finger marks, the finger painting in rainbow? Do we want to do it in rainbow again? Are we okay with that? Uh, you know, I love the rainbow stuff, so it'll be fun. I haven't been here in quite a while, but it's so nice to tune in and see nothing has changed. Vicki asks our opinion, then does whatever she planned to do anyway. No, I did take opinion um, at the beginning, but not everybody's opinion's the same. So I maybe agreed with one of you guys and did it. That's hilarious. Um, what would you like me to do? Okay, that's nice. I'm going to do this, right? Isn't that hilarious? So I'm going to do rainbow. Guess what we're using? This magic tool. So get ready for it. Yes, I'm glad you're back, uh, uh, Jen, and I'm glad you're back and giving me a hard time. It makes me very happy. You are my new favorite tonight because I love people who give me a hard time. So we are going to load our finger up with some water. You could mist these. That might be easier. Let's try that. Let's just put some water down into our paints. And then, oh, they're good to go. Look. And I'm just going to do, I'm, oh, for this one, it's going to be in a circle. I'm going to do like a kind of circle effect. Okay, let's see. So it's going to be like a circle wave effect. Okay, there's my yellow. Rinsing my finger off, cleaning my paintbrush. Going to go in with some orange. And I'm putting them in with the yellow as well. Okay. And then I'm going to maybe take a little orange and yellow. I can clean that off, so don't panic about that, okay? You can also go in after and add on like this. So I could take in my, see, so just clean that off. You can take your paper towel, whatever you want. Oh, see, magic, clean. Um, I'm going to go in now with the red. I like going from the red to the pink. So now see, oh, just some dots. And we could do this in some layers too. So I'm going to go in, make sure your finger's wet enough. Okay, clean that off. And I'll go into the pink now. Oh, that's not very wet. I want to do this stuff so bad. I'd have to try some with Distress Ink oxides as I don't have watercolor. Um, yes, and if you're not feeling well, make sure you take care of yourself. I would recommend, I, if you use your oxides, uh, it's going to stain your finger. You really want like a just something like a cheap set of paints, okay, like these, because they will wash off. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, if you're going in with your um, inks, that uh, unless, of course, you don't, you're fine with that, right? Turn your page if you need to, right? Turn your page if you need to. I'm going to go in with my blue. And you can layer on top some of those colors, right? Oh, I love this. Isn't that fun? So now let's make our turquoise. So I'm going to put some of those two together. Yeah, take care of yourself, Keisha. It doesn't have to be perfect. Look at this is not a perfect kind of circular, but it's fun. So go in, I'm gonna put some of that green here, like this, and it trails off. And some of the darker green. If you guys are asking questions, I apologize that I'm focused on my painting and I totally ignored you. So is there, are there any questions? Is there? See, it's fun though, right? Cause I'm sure some of you, when you were looking at this, you were like, 
this sounds silly. I don't want to do like these watercolors. What I don't want to do that, Vicky, but I'll check it out just in case. And then are you finding that you're more interested in it than you planned on being? <laughs> Happens, right? So I'm just going to overlay some of it. Put a couple more of those dark ones in because I like them. And you could really go in here if you want to. I'm going to go back up to the yellow, so i got to make sure my... How fast was this background, right? And you didn't need any fancy tools because we're using finger, finger painting. The water's pretty dirty now. So going back up to the yellow, you might want to wait till your fingers clean, but whatever. Okay, just kind of know because I went in blue last, right? But I do like the kind of so um, layering a little bit. with the red I love this one I have to say I'm really happy with this one right oh fingers not wet enough that pink and then know when to walk away and i'm going to walk away right and like i said this is just a cheap what well, part of me let me rephrase that inexpensive set of watercolor right a lot of you guys could you buy everything because you're super supporters everything that has my name on it I love that you could totally sit and do this with your kids. Let's do a card version now because you know I will be making the card. So I just cut, like these are four by six or something or maybe even bigger. I'll cut it down to what I need. But um, what do we, anything special we want? So we'll set that aside. I love it. Uh, were you crafting right before bed, <laughs> Ellen? Yeah. Uh, so any questions? Because I'm looking at the screen now if I missed anything, right? That's why I like these Friday nights. You learn so many different techniques and style. I love it. Well, and you know what, Ellie? Like when somebody had posted, will you use this? Because I have it and I, I have it and I haven't opened it yet. And I thought, perfect. That's a perfect thing. And here's the thing. The, the gauntlet or was thrown down or the, there was the challenge, right? Is what are you going to do with this, Vicky? And then I went, let's just do some really simple backgrounds. Um, so C colors. So, oh, yeah, we could. So I'm going to go like in a wave down my page, okay? And on the side. So I'm going to do blues and greens. I like that. Let's go in. I'm going to start this time with kind of like green. But it's not going to be like there can be green all over. Okay, so there's my green. Now I'm going to make like a turquoise -y color. Okay. Go in there with some blue. Some light blue. See, and I'm just not doing a full fingerprint. Oh, this is going to be very pretty. Um, maybe some more greeny blue. So I'm tapping some of these because you can, because it's all kind of in the same color family, right into the other colors. And let's make a little bit more of a turquoise 
So let's try this blue and that green. And I want some of that navy in there again. blue. I'm going to do something crazy just because we can. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, okay? So now I'm going to take some water. I'm going to spray it on here and I'm going to lift it and let it pour down my page. This is going to freak you out, but we can, because why not just kind of, oh, maybe, look at, maybe don't lift it. Just kind of go with this, but I am going to pick up a little bit of that moisture. Let's move it around a little bit. Oh, I love it. Okay. Oh, I love it. And leave it. How fun is that? So what's these paints, because the binder in them is um, very inexpensive binder. So you'll find that these paints can tend to separate where the pigment just kind of floats around. But instead of fighting that, let it work for you. Right. So I can see where they're kind of separating, but it's going to be really pretty. So don't mess it too much because you want the kind of um, the bits to stay. The other thing we can do is when that dries, there's no reason I couldn't go in and do a second layer on top. Right. So I'm just going to leave that alone. Just leave it alone. Let it dry. Don't mess with it. Don't heat set it. This is one of those things that will work better if C2, um, because my page is starting to buckle, not a bad idea to put it somewhere and put something heavier on this side so your paint lays flat so it doesn't all pool to the sides okay so i'm going to do exactly this and just let it sit i love it okay so thank you for joining us jill and guess what these are recorded so if you can't stay for the whole bit because it's late where you are you totally can come back and watch it later i'm moving this somewhere where i won't ruin it i cannot wait to see what that one looks like magic just happened before our eyes because that's what you guys give me on friday night the opportunity to just go with it have fun right okay setting that aside to dry letting it just pool and do its thing just leave it alone leave it alone are you ready now we're gonna paint the leaves you need a round brush for this oh clean water let's get clean water because we don't want orange and greens and blues because we'll have very muddy garden. A very muddy garden. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you like to go with earthier tones, you totally can do that. I'm being a little bit of a purist tonight, but you can do whatever makes you happy. Okay. Here we go. Clean water. You need to stay because you're loving it so much. Well, and you know what? This is not going to be um, a super long one tonight because unless you guys want to make a layout from one of these, we totally can. So now we're going to paint. And I just messed around. I literally just messed around to make this one. So I just decided to put them off the side of the page because I figured you could put title, you could put your images up there. It would make it easy to do a um, layout, okay? Blue and red equals purple, secondary, yes. But if you mix purple and orange, they um, that's when you get into the dirtier colors, okay? So I have a number 10 round. Make sure it's clean. And what I'm going to do is just literally let my round brush work for me. OK, 
okay so let's just pick we'll go in with any i'm going to just do greens and blues you can do whatever you want though okay and just pick an area and i'm, I'm just going to go in and do your leaves so that idea okay and then what you're going to do is just kind of lightly create this is not perfect painting i want it to be loose and fun okay there's one i can go in and fill this after if i want to let's go in and make a little bit of a darker green and it can be turn your page if you want to flat and flick flat and flick flat and flick flat and flick okay they do not have to be perfect and then lightly take your tip and then just take the wet paint that's already there and let it blend into your stem okay Practice this on a scrap piece of paper first if you want to. Your brush shouldn't be super wet, but wet enough so that you get those fun pigments in there, okay? I can even take flat and flick, and it can touch and go on top, and then two leaves kind of blend into each other. And then just kind of come down. There's no reason that the leaves can't. Blend in, OK. Maybe I'm going to do that exact same color up here. Flat and flick, flat and flick. Do not have to be perfect. Nobody's going to come and look to see what kind of leaves that you got. And then that's super light, super light flick i want you to go in here like that do not try to make it perfect if you try to go for perfection it makes it way too hard okay so go in i'm going to make a new lighty greeny lighty green um maybe kind of off the page so let's turn our page a little and it's going to go here flat and flick some of it might be behind this one a little bit Drag my line down, flat and flick, flat and flick, 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 flick. Okay. So now, just kind of think about um, how you're painting them. Like I'll, I'm going to do a taller one here that comes about here. I'll do some that come off the side and then I can layer some on top. I can push some behind, okay? So let's go in and make another green, maybe with some of that navy. Let's go daring and let's make that flat and flick. Very loose, friends, loose, loose leaves. These can come down here. This one will come pretty low. And then just drag your brush through without even having to reload. If this is not easy the first time, it will get easier. Okay? You just kind of have to go with it. Some didn't turn out perfectly. That's all right. There's just new opportunity to throw a leaf on there. Oh, I love that. Look at that blue in there. Maybe I don't love that though. I'm gonna put a little bit more green in that. Okay, see, that's not perfect. Don't even care. You can make it perfect, right? We'll just put something else on top of it after. I'm gonna go in with the limey green. I'm gonna make it come off, maybe here, flat and flick. So I start with the center leaf, side leaves, bring them down. If there's not enough paint, just put some on there. Okay. You don't even have to load the brush every time. If you wanted to come in here with um, less paint, you totally could. 
see, and this one, I'm going to trying to make it so it's behind this leaf. So maybe I'll do the stem and then decide where I want to fill in some leaves. Okay. I'm going to go in with some more of the light green ones. I'm going to put some more leaves on this one. Make this kind of bluey green. It's kind of a mess going on right there, but we'll just go with it. Okay, see that mess going on? But I'll show you how I will work on that. I want to throw a little bit more green into this turquoise because it's too close to that color we just did already. So I'll just paint right over top of what I have going on. Just switch that a bit. And then I'm just going to do it one here. And then all we're going to do is drip some paint. Oh, I don't want that. We asking questions or anything? I'm sorry. You know what is is not that it's and turn your page if you find it's too hard to get your brush to do what you want. Just turn your page, okay? Um, I just think you really have to um, not try to make it perfect. I think is what the key is, okay? Now with what's in my brush, I am going to put. Because I just find that just putting some paint drips down in this adds to, um, if it wasn't perfect, this helps a little bit. If the paint is still wet, it kind of floats in there too and adds a little charm. Like my hot mess that's going on right here. I'm going to try something because I can on my page, right? I'm going to pick up as much pigment there as I can just by doing this. Ooh, look at that magic that just happened. I just look at this technique. So I'm going to take my paper towel and in some of these areas, oh, I love that. It just takes some of the pigment off and I could always go in and do another layer if I wanted to. Not too much. Don't go crazy. But I can add this green leaf. I'll do a second one. Oh, too much. Too much water. Do it again. Okay, and let's go in with a little bit more green. Ah, see? I fixed it. I don't hate it as much now. So you could totally go in here now, right? With hardly any paint, more water, and you could have just hints. Like I could do a whole one that just looks like a hint of green. Maybe a little bit more pigment. See, just kind of a hint to wet. I 
and then know when enough is enough. Like there's, um, ooh. okay, friends. So I'm just taking my wet brush now and softening some of that. But you will find, and then just play See if I can't clean up this little bit of this mess that's in here. It's almost better to just leave it. I'll put one darker leaf right on top here. I don't know how wet that is. Okay. I'm going to feed one in to there, feed that in there. There. That's better. Bring it to the front. Okay. So that just gives you an idea. There's a little bit of a blemish there, but I could stick a butterfly there and nobody would ever know. So when it dries and you just leave it alone, right? Look how fun. You could do hearts. You could do whatever. I just thought a leaf and a flat brush is something that everybody should be able to manage doing, right? So that is it for the leaf background and then let that dry. Let's look at our saran wrap, plastic wrap. What do you guys call it in Australia, in New Zealand? What do you guys call plastic wrap? Okay. Let's look, it's dry enough. What do we got going on? Are you ready for the reveal? Glad wrap. I love it. Let's look. Are you ready? Look how pretty that is. Look how easy that is. And the magic happens because of the gesso. So see how you get, don't, don't rub on it because it might not com be completely dry. But because of the type of paint where we're like, they're inexpensive paint, but guess what? That's what makes magic is because the pigment separates from the binder and you get that really, really fun effect. Okay. And you could wipe this off and use it again. So we have that. Let's throw this mess over here. Let's look at our big one that I just kind of flipped and threw it on there. Right. Ready? Oh my goodness. I want you to see the reveal. Are you ready for the reveal? Look how pretty. So this happened because the gesso was in here, made them milkier. Watch, because it could still be wet. Look how fun this is. So here's what's magical with this, is you could go and visit my friend Nicole and go to her just next studio and get yourself a awesome cut file. Can you imagine cutting a title out of this? You could put a layout on here if you want. You could stamp and stencil. This could be like one part, but then you could also cut, use a cut file and it would be gorgeous because people would look at that and go, how the heck did you get that background? They could figure it out here. But when you take this and make it contained funk, by putting it into a pattern that you put through your cut file, depending how thick you use a gesso, like mine will be pretty flat. So you could totally cut this or through your dies, you could stamp on top of this and, and um, die cut butterflies, how beautiful, or flowers. So you, this doesn't only have to be a background that you use on a layout, right? And when all the moisture leaves, like you could put this underneath um, something heavy, or run it through your mink and it will flatten your page out. But this is really pretty. 
This turned out really pretty. Let's look at our rainbow one where we put the pigment down and put the saran on top and no gesso. Oh my goodness. Look how fun that is. So it's going to be a lot more subtle effect because the pigment was already soaking into the paper. But how fun is that? How fun is that, right? This could be a mat for underneath a photo. Don't run your hand on it right now because it's not dry. But it could have some chalkiness where um, the paint separates. But how fun is that? So look at that. Let's look at what we've made for backgrounds. So could this, I would like to, can we do something to enhance this? So I'm going to get my heat gun just to take some of the moisture out. And now I'm going to throw, we're going to throw a stencil on here and some distress ink. Oxide. I'll even use oxides tonight. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to take this and how I would use it now to make a whole background. Could totally stamp butterflies and cut them out. Totally could use this. I'll do another one and I'll use, I'll do a cut file with it. But for tonight, I want to show how this could be my first layer and then I could mix, mix media. It, yeah, I totally could do silver. You want me to do silver, Brenda? I can use um, my silver glaze and I'll even mix it with a little bit of watercolor to make a silver um, paste fun. So get ready for it. I'm gonna dry this a little just cause there's a lot of moisture still on this page. Good night, Jill. Thanks for sticking around. You know, in a perfect world, I would totally be putting this through my ink, my mink just to flatten it and get all the moisture out. But I can feel it. It's still pretty, pretty, pretty wet. You could totally splatter on it if you want to, Phyllis, but you know if you've met me, this is a little bit um, funky and I like it to be a little bit more contained. So I'm going to show how I would make this vicify this. So I'm going to vicify this. I don't need to bake it like a cookie. I'm just flattening it by taking a little bit of the moisture out, but it doesn't need to get um, super hot. Okay. So now let's find a stencil and we can build into this pattern, right? Build into this pattern. So I'm going to use two different stencils. I am going to go in with something very simple and then I'm going to go in with something a little bit more ornate. Okay. So these are the ones when I um, stock my store. I have about 50 of each of these that I'm going to be putting up in the store. So I'm using this, but unless you were at the um, uh, scrapbook and cards event, this was in my kit with the class that I did. But um, Catherine gave me some of them to sell as well on my shop. I just haven't had a chance to add them. So it's coming. So let's use this one. I think I'm going to go in with this one. I'm going to find my silver glaze because that's iridescent, but I agree. Silver because cool will work beautifully with this. Where did you put it, Vicki? Ouch. That was me stubbing my toe. I don't know if this one is open yet. No, I'm not going to open one that's not open. Let me just find one. Nothing can be easy, right? I had all three of them right here. Oh, I found it. You know where I put it, friends, was on my uh, background that's drying. So I'm not losing my mind. It just went, oh, it's going to be so pretty. I have to remember that you guys said you wanted something that was beachy on that one, right? What are we agreeing, Vicky? This has to be one of my favorite Friday night lives. Need to work on the leaves, but the finger painting was so much fun, right? It's no different when we blow the bubbles and do all of these things. And I'll tell you why you're having so much fun is because I'm forcing you to just let go. Just let go, right? 
just like go and have fun with it. So um, I'm going to stencil brush this so it dries fast. Okay. So let's try. Let's see what happens when we mix some of the paint with the glaze with the stencil brush and go through the stencil. Okay. I want to try to make this color first. So what do we use for that one? I don't even remember. It was the blue and the purple, I think, right? The navy. So I'm just putting it right here on my mat with some of the purple. That looks good. I like that color. And then I'm just going to take some of the glaze and just blend that right in there. and tint it just slightly. Could you use this full on silver? Sure you could, but I think it will be fun to make it like a metallic purple to blend into what we have going on. So that totally worked. I just tinted that with these. Okay. And now I'm just going to pounce into this because if it's too wet, it will bleed underneath my stencil. So I am going to go in like this. I'm kind of going in. Do you see? It's just kind of floating up the page. Look at it. Isn't that fun? So I'm not going to move my stencil. I'm going to throw a little bit of the red in here before I completely clean this off. I'm going to do this. I know none of it's going over here, but it just adds to the looseness and charm. What's going on? Now clean my brush. I'm going to take a little bit of the red and mix that in here. Tap your brush in there. I put it on my paper towel a little bit too because it's going to be very loose now, right? So you don't want it to bleed under your stencil. So I'm going in very light handed. Kind of on what we already have going on. Okay, just adds another color. And I'm going to try to fit this because it is a repeating stencil. Just to get some of that redness up here. And I'm going to go in with something else and layer it right on top of there. Some polka dots, just because it's a smaller pattern. And let's put some pink in there now, and I'll put a little bit more silver down. Actually, I'm just going to need whatever is on here. We'll just use that. Could you use uh, one of these brushes? You could try it. Just make sure you clean it after, okay? It's very wet, so I'm just doing this first and then I can rub. Okay. Dot it first and then rub it. You still could put this through and um, cut file on it, right? You totally could still cut file. So I wasn't loving where my pattern was going, right? That's why if you're like, why did you opt to do this? It's because it just, when I flip my... Um, Saran over, I didn't really have control. So I just wanted to add a little bit of
pattern. And there you go, right? So now it wasn't just kind of this weird blob in the middle of the page. Could you still go in with silver? You sure could. And you could go in with a texture paste. Net. Let's do it. Let's do it. Now I just put all that wet on there. So let me dry it a little bit. And then let's go in with something linear and layer some silver on top of this. I'm going to pick this up with paper towel, but I'm just so I don't lift all the pigment off. And my paper towels are all soaked. So let's just do the best we can finding a cleaner section. And then, oh, and then guess what is all that's left behind is silver. I love it. I'm lifting the pigment out, but then I get just these little silver dots. Okay, there. And now we can go through with a palette knife and some silver glaze as a texture paste. And I'm going to run it right on this side. Make sure you clean your stencil brush if you have one. I Like I said to you guys, um, there's new ones coming. They were discontinued, but they're coming back. I've asked for them to come back in a single brush. So you can buy a couple of them because you will want more than one, but they clean so easily. Okay, let's find something linear that we could put. Ooh, how about... I? change my mind how about the hearts but if I put the hearts down this is going to block out most of the pigment right so I could go down here and put hearts mm, I'm changing my mind because I can <laughs> I want something that has very little space but it also has to show up mm, that could be fun this could be fun I'm totally doing this one. So I'm going to start at the top because I'm going to carry this down, but I'm totally going in with this older stencil. You got to be careful. You don't want it to bleed under because my paper is very buckly. So I'm going to try to hold that as flat as possible. And we're going to go in with silver. I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to work my way down. And it could be bleeding under the stencil because, remember, um, it's not very flat. But, oh my goodness, friends, this is going to be so pretty. Can you see that texture paste? Oh my gosh, I love it. So I'm going to look at the back of my stencil and make sure it didn't bleed under too much. Because I'm going to position this a little bit further down and I don't want to leave a mess. Okay. So I'm going to carry this across the page so it comes to this side now. I'm going to hold it so I don't lay it where um, there's wet glaze down. And I'm going to put some more texture paste. It's very hard. I'm trying to do it all with one hand. Work in one direction. Don't push it back underneath your stencil. Let's see what we get. Oh my goodness. I love this so much. I'm going to put something on the side though, like that. Turn it. We'll turn it like this. There. Love it. Isn't that fun? And you guys won't really be able to see this yet. But um, when I show it to you when it's all dry, because it's very, um, uh, the color really blends in. But I love that. Oh my goodness. I love this. And I wasn't too sure a minute ago. It's very fun. 
but right we just elevated putting a couple of layers on there i would like one more circle up here though so i have to do it but it's going to be tricky the thing you could do is wait till all of it dries and then go in and lay it so don't do this if you're afraid you're going to make a mess um, i'm going to take my chances because it's what i do <laughs> but what i would recommend is uh, see i'll do it like that right there and hope for the best hope for the best mickey's hoping for the best it could make a mess i don't know but let's see not too bad not too bad i love it i love this kind of kaleidoscope thing going on here see that So now this will have to be left till tomorrow, right? Yes, I will use these layouts for sure, Poppy. We could do, if you want me to, next week could be part two. And uh, I can just keep going right now to just show how to level them up. And we can totally make layouts next week. Do you want me to do that? Next Friday can be taking these and making a whole bunch of layouts and cards. Wouldn't that be fun? And I can start at seven. We can start at seven. So that gives you guys a whole week to make whatever, whatever you want to make. And then we could totally go in and make layouts and cards from all of our backgrounds. Okay. So I am going to move this. Now we have all this going on. So I don't want to rinse this down the sink. So let's find something to throw that on. Okay. I'm going to throw this on something. Because I have two double backgrounds of a lot of these things. Here, I have the other side of this where I just um, swatched these. So let's do something fun because I could use this for a card background. I'm going to clean my palette knife off with whatever extra glaze. Because it's on the side, always do this. Oops. And don't spray it all over yourself like I just did because there's still some on the palette knife. Just so it doesn't sit just in the top because you really want to keep all of your paints where it's all pooled at the bottom rather than like a big chunk of it on the side. Okay. And then I just tap it so it goes into the uh, bottom and don't get it all in your paints like I did there. Okay. So, oh. I want to do something. Let's try this. So guess what? I'm going to take my palette, my stencil brush in the glaze. So I'm going to do my little trick that I like to do. And we're going to miss this stencil. Missed it a lot. You're going to kiss it down. So we're going to do stencil stamping. Okay. Missed it. I'm misting it off screen, but misting this. Now I'm going to do one stamp with it. So I'll just use this because I can just sec. There's so much glaze on that stencil because I use a palette knife that I know I wouldn't do my normal stencil stamping. I'm going to do one impression with it and then pick it up and mist it again. Only because I know there's tons of glaze on that. And if I leave it, it's going to glue to the page and we don't want that. So there, we're just going to do that. Look at fun. Just something you could use. Still tons of medium on here. going to miss that and do another one. But this one, press it down. Brayer. If you have your brayer, brayer it. And now I'm going to take my stencil brush and I'm going to go into my purple paint just like that. Missed it. Burp, burp, burp. Let's see what we get. I'm going to miss that. And I'm going to lift it. Let's see what we get. Oh, look at that. I love it. I'm going to try to lay the stencil again and put some of that purple up so I could use this whole side page if I wanted to. So just try to position it. I don't care if it's perfect and put some of that purple in there.
and now totally let that dry and see what you get. But you would wipe that all off on a paper towel, right? So just totally going to let that dry. The other thing I will do because I can is take some of that purple because there's silver in it. So I'm cleaning it at the same time. And then I'm going to tap into that as well. A little purple goodness. Dilute it. we'll leave that to dry and we can do something fun with it just totally leave it to dry quickly gonna clean my stuff and then let's look at everything we've got here you know I have to I'm sure some people could leave it I can't I've got to clean the crap off Very good. Okay, 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 okay. So this one has to go aside. It's gonna be very fun though when it dries. And that was just from cleaning the stencil, right? So we'll see what we get later. Just wipe your stuff off. Close that guy up. So see? That's what we get from these are cheap watercolors. It doesn't mean that they still can't come to the party, right? You're not always going to be going to the party in your Versace. Sometimes you're going to have your Jordache jeans from Bargain Heralds on. And it's totally okay, right? It doesn't mean you can't make the cutest art from what you have. Right? It's one of those um, make lemonade, right? When you get lemons, make lemonade kind of scenarios. Let's look at this guy. Because I will 100%. These are not high-end products. It is a inexpensive set of watercolors. But it doesn't mean that if you paid for it and they're in your stash, find something to do with it. I'm going to pick up some of that. Just because it's very wet. So like I said, this one still has a lot of drying to do. Look what I just did. I fix that because that'll bother me. Um, but it shows you what this is going to be really pretty when it's done, right? And it is. Yes, Ellen, it's accessible, right? I'm not saying like, guess what, guys? We're going to use watercolor today, but all of you have to go out and buy a $50 set of watercolors. Some There might be a day that I do that, right? But at least this is something that anyone just watching this on Facebook or Instagram, no, what are we on? Facebook or YouTube can totally do this. You don't have to spend a ton of money, which I love, right? Sometimes we're going to do things that maybe it's more investment. Sometimes we'll use things that accessible, accessible to everyone. So there's one of our layout, our backgrounds. We are going to make projects out of all of these. So I love that. There's that. We have our leaves that we made, right? There is, look at it, it's almost dry now. So this is the one we did tonight. This is the one I did previously. These are super fun, right? I'm going to do a background with these on a card. I will have that ready for next Friday as well. So I love it. Uh, what else did we do tonight? Our watercolor rainbow. And I'm not doing anything else to this because I'm going to show you. Um, you want for this one, like I'm going to use next week, the um, Pink Fresh uh, Happy Hearts. 
I already laid everything out here. And we're going to do a layout with this. And I'm going to use a yellow embellishment, an orange embellishment, pink, red. So uh, shop your stash and find titles or flowers or you can stamp them that are actually uh, color coordinated with each stripe. We're going to do a whole bunch of words on this side and then a photo. We're going to sew on it. That's going to happen next week. Uh, and then we have all these other, I love, I freaking love this one. I love that. Look how fun this is. And some of these layouts are going to be super simple. You're going to find, right? When we go and take this. So we have all of these things that are going to be in our stash. Will I use everything? Don't know. I might end up die cutting a title out of some of this, like this one. Oh my goodness. I am going to um, use my silhouette or cricket and i'm going to cut words out of this so that will be fun i'm going to show you something with a cut file i'll show you you could use circle punches like look at how fun would this be you could just go in with your circle punches look at and do or a heart punch and you could do a whole card or layout with like rainbow shapes totally love that right um what else do we have so these are the other ones that i did ahead of time so depending on what color you used right look at look how pretty that is so for you guys who wanted blues and greens there's a blue and green with the um smooshing technique there's rainbow just up the side of the page and there i use blues and greens with my stencil and this is a lot cleaner and simpler right and then we have this hot mess express when it dries that's going to be so much fun i can't put anything on top of that one so is that everything i think that's everything we did tonight right that's everything we did tonight so what the intention is is now instead of going into a layout tonight i will give you guys a chance to catch up right i will give you guys a chance to catch up if you didn't play along and next i'm going to flip the camera around so i can talk to you hi next friday is going to start at seven because i'm going to be here for a while i will tell you what products product lines i'm going to use with each of these um, i will tell you the photo sizes that i'm going to use i will try to i need to remind myself to get that up Oh, I have a piece of glass on here. I don't even know what I broke. Um, I'll get that posted by Wednesday or Thursday. So you guys have a chance to grab what you need. And we're going to make at least four layouts, four layouts and a couple of cards next week. So I'll tell you sizes so you can cut and have things ready. And even if you can't finish it all and you get one or two layouts done next week, you can watch the video, but I will do them. I'm going to start at 7 p.m. Eastern time next Friday. And now we'll take all of the backgrounds we did tonight and elevate them. I'm going to use Color Study, Fernwood, and some Pink Fresh. I already know. That's what I'm going to use. Color Study, which is my, my line. Color Study, Pink Fresh, um, Happy Hearts, and Fernwood. That's what I'm going to do, right? Yay, Vicki. We had an early night. But Nat, we had an early night, but it was jam-packed with fun, don't you think? Like, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. I'm so excited, though. So, um, four layouts next week and at least two cards, maybe more. 7 p.m. Eastern Time next Friday. And we'll make projects from these backgrounds. So, even if you make a couple using one technique, maybe you make four backgrounds using the saran wrap smooshing technique. Um, maybe you just did the finger painting. Maybe you're going to try bubble wrap instead of saran wrap. Whatever you want to do. Have some backgrounds ready. If you're a card maker, you can make everything um, into a card. I'll even, I'm going to sketch it all out. And then I, I will do layout and card from the same kind of design. How about that? That'll be fun. See, I'm just making way more work for myself. How do you get your black eyeliner so perfect? I have been wearing my makeup exactly like this for my whole life, my cat's eyes. I know my daughter's always like, um, how do you get your cat's eyes? <laughs> like forever. And the best liquid eyeliner is MAC. 
and I use all of them. It stays on all day long. So there's my little makeup tip as well. So I use a liquid eyeliner from MAC that looks like a felt pen and it is the best one. So it's MAC brand liquid eyeliner in black. So there you go. Cause you asked. So I tell you, are there any questions, right? Um, it, it's so good though, right? Ellie, like this was fun tonight. And if this was your first time, um, Mac, M-A-C, you know, the Mac brand, uh, it's big in Canada. I don't know if you have Mac, M-A-C, liquid eyeliner in black. And it takes some practice friends, but you should start at the corner and in an easy swoop, you come right to almost the outer section of your eye. And then you take your eyeliner and because it's a felt tip, it's not a brush, it's a solid felt tip. You come here, you bend it and swoop in and then you fill it if you need to, but that's your tip. You start at the corner, very thin, follow the line of your eye. Then you come up to the top, take the tip. So the dot is laying like the, the side of the eyeliner lays on your eye and you swoop it. That's how I do it. So anyway. That's how I get my eyeliner on. And you don't always get eyeliner, right? Because I've been having a lot of eczema issues, so I can't wear makeup all the time, but it is the best. It is the best. Um, any questions other than my eyeliner? Hi from Australia. Was late today, but looks like I, I'm going to be able to play all afternoon. Yes, and it won't take you long. It will not take you long. That's the whole thing. Do not try for perfection here. I really want you to let go right? Deep breath, let go and just have fun with it. And if your kids are around today, so you're like, I can't craft because the kids are around, you totally could do this, do this with the kids. Throw them some cardstock, finger paint together, do the smooshing technique with some plastic wrap, right? Super fun, right? Sweet rush rock walk through next week, Julie. Um, I don't know. It won't be Monday because I have Zumba. How about next Tuesday? Because it's all right here, friends. We'll do the Sweet Rush walkthrough next Tuesday at 7 p.m. So anybody who's watching tonight, I'm going to walk through the whole collection of Sweet Rush, share some of the layouts that I've done, because it's going to be shipping in April. If you haven't um, checked it out already and you want to play, maybe this is your first time doing an online class with me. And um, my collection classes are always lots of fun because we do layouts, we do um, a mini book and we do cards and you get everything that you need in your kit except for your basic tools. So you can check that out on vickybooten.com. Just hover over shop, go down, you'll see Sweet Rush Weekend. If you want to look at the Spectrum Sherbet kit, you can look at that. Um, there's lots of stuff on the shop. If you want to find any of my exclusive stencils, you can find them all on there as well. And the other thing, friends, if you're watching for the first time, if you order something that's small in your say in the US or even in Canada, everything on my shop is based on a 13 by 13 by four box. If the thing I'm mailing for you is smaller, I always go in and adjust the shipping. Like somebody had ordered just a sticker set or something small and they're like, oh my gosh, you really charge $25 for shipping? No, but because I'm on Shopify and it's not like a, a website where I can go in and do all of those kind of things. Plus it's, it's pretty complicated to try to figure out what size of product that you guys are ordering, but I always go in and adjust your shipping. So if it says $25, but you're only ordering stencils, I will go in and adjust like for the U S then the shipping goes down to like seven or $8 Canadian, but I always go back and adjust. Okay. So if you were like, that's crazy, <laughs> that's what I do. Okay. Yay. Um, so yay, yay, yay. Lots of fun. That's it for tonight. It was an early night. Get your backgrounds done. And next weekend, next Friday night, we're going to make a whole bunch of projects and I will try to get the, um, link up early with a whole list of what you'll need. Okay. But that was fun. Thanks so much. Question looking for, where'd I see that? Looking for other sweet rush template help. Looking for other Sweet Rush template. Do you mean the stencil, Leanne? I'm not sure what that means. If it was the exclusive one from scrapbook.com with the beautiful flowers on it, this one that I made this stuff with, is this what you're talking about, Leanne? 
It was a gift with purchase, but it will be in their store. I don't know when, but soon. So you, you have to keep checking. Scrapbook.com is the only one that will have this stencil set because they ordered it as an exclusive. So they said to their salespeople, like, hey, um, we've done exclusives with Paige. We've done exclusives with, um, with uh, Crate Paper. Can we do one with Vicky? And they reached out and said, what would you like to do? And I said, well, that's a no brainer. Let's do a stencil pack. So we designed a third stencil pack, a third to go with Sweet Rush, but it is, I cannot sell it. It's exclusive to scrapbook.com. They did it last week and it sold out. You guys went crazy and you were all buying to get that. Um, it's sold out, but they will stock it, but it'll be limited number. I will email to find out when it's going live on their page. And I'll share that with you in um, the Vicky Boot and Creative Community page. So I will post uh, info there because somebody told me what day it's going to go up. I just have to find that info. So isn't that fun? Oh, my goodness, Shannon. That's so exciting. Shannon was able to get six backgrounds done tonight, right? You found my eyeliner. It's I'm telling you, Denise, it's the best. And it just takes a little practice and it just washes off with my face cleanser. You don't, it's not permanent or like a waterproof or anything. Um, it's there already. There you go, Roxanne. It's there already. So go to scrapbook.com. Please follow one of my links if you're going already because it costs you nothing. But um, if you use any of my share or sale, any of them to scrapbook.com just to get you there. And then you can add anything to your cart. And um, that helps me a little bit and cost you nothing. So I would love that. So yes, it's there and it is awesome. What size are your stencils? About uh, Aloha from Hawaii. I can't wait to get back to Maui. Um, they're six by eight ish, six by eight. So they're a decent size. So they work great with 12 by 12 backgrounds, work great on cards. They're all different scales, but that set is only available at scrapbook.com. And somebody just told me, whoever it was that, oh, Lisa, that it's there now. So you can add that if you're um, shopping at scrapbook.com. Okay. I got my stencil yesterday. So fun. Can't wait. And you saw the things I made with it, right? Like, look at the card. And that's made with the stencil, right? I just fussy cut it and then use this another one from the set. And then did my trick for the leaves with my circle punch, right? When you take your circle punch and you just uh, cut a circle and then cut a corner of your a corner or an edge of your circle, right? I love it. I miss Hawaii too. I want to go to Hawaii. So friends, lots of exciting things for my friends in Australia and New Zealand or anybody that wants to travel to meet us. We are working on a cruise out of Australia. And then I'm going to work on teaching to land classes um, at, at least. So be watching that for that at the end of 2023. So um, it is going to be happening. So um, we're just working on it. So lots of fun. Any other questions? Hi, Simon. How are you, my friend? Oh, one of the things I'm adding to my shop, two things, Simon things, is a stencil and his, what is it, prom queen? Look, it's right here, Simon. Because I don't have a color, anything that is as freaking vibrant and awesome as this one. So this one's going to be going in my store. Um, and we're going to make some Vicky Booten magic with some Simon Hurley, we should do Simon, we should do like, um, I should have you on and you should come and play with me one night. We should totally do a live together. But yes, I absolutely freaking love prom queen. Like this was made for me. I think Simon, I think I, you had me in mind when you made the best pink ever. So I love it. And then, um, I bought one of your stamps. It's in, I have a whole bin of stuff beside me, but the one with all the circles on it, like they're dotted circles. And then Simon Stamps pieces pop out. So they're freaking awesome. So thank you, friend. Yes, DM me because he's young. Simon's young. DM me. I'm going to slide into his DMs. <laughs> this old lady, right? Um, and we'll plan something really fun where we can use. Maybe I'll send Simon some Vicky Booten stuff. And then we can like do like a, a split screen live. Wouldn't that be fun? I brought it to Ranger team and said, this one's for Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 100%. I know you did because like it's a total Barbie pink. I love it. So very excited. So I have a little Simon Hurley in the house. 
So um, we'll have to do something fun to play with that. But um, do these ship from the States or Canada? Anything for me is from Canada, but it ships through USPS. Uh, I have a um, freight forwarder that I just package it up, drop it off, and then it can ship to you guys. So yay, that would be so much fun. His stamps are the best. I love the pop-out stamps. Me too. Simon is just period the best, right? Teach me your scrapbooking mixed media ways. Wouldn't that be fun? Because I bet you have some great photos that uh, you could do something with, Simon. I would love that. Or we could even do like an art journal kind of vibe. But we'll have to talk. I think that would be a lot of fun. I think we should start doing special guests and then get some of my favorite um, crafters on here and we can do some crafting together. So I think any other questions and then I'll let you go because it's 1010 and this is early for me. <laughs> So uh, let me know now, but otherwise I'm going to sign off. I have um, a whole bunch of cleaning and doing some little grab bags with leftover fern wood and a whole bunch of stuff that's going to go up in my store in the next two weeks, right? So it'll be fun. Do you have a Bob Ross figurine? I most certainly do. Here he is with his raccoon. That's Bob Ross and that's his raccoon. So yes, I do. Affiliate links are in the description of the video, Antonia. They're in the description of the video. So if, oh, and don't forget, if you guys did not order the watercolor set I used tonight and you want to add it with any of your orders on vickybooten.com, place the order and I will refund the shipping immediately and I will ship it with either of your pre-orders. I have about 40 of them and they're $7 Canadian on vickybooten.com, right? Question, will you be doing a Fernwood Tag album video? Yes. And I actually even have about five of them that I'm going to put in my store with all of the materials I'm using. So I'm going to use the ephemera packs, a couple different, the sticker book, a six by eight paper pad. So it'll be fun. Uh, I love it. So I'm going for real now. I think that's it, right? Hazel says hello and good night. Hello and good night, Hazel. Um, Don, you need to do a teach me how to Vicky series with guests. I would love that. And we just have to find people who there's something that I do that they would love to. I would love to do that. Teach me how to Vicky. Don, you're always the smartest and the prettiest. I love that idea, right? So yes, I saw that Lisa. Lisa ordered her watercolor and I saw that. And I, did I refund your shipping yet? I saw it. I need to do it. But yes, that's it. I'm done. Good night, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. I will see you on Tuesday for at 7 p.m. for the walkthrough of Sweet Rush. And then I will see you next Friday at 7 p.m. We're going to start early, so remember that. And we're going to do a whole bunch of layouts with the backgrounds that we created. And that gives you a couple of days to catch up if you didn't get a chance to work on them tonight. Have a wonderful evening and weekend. And we will see you Tuesday and then Friday. Bye, guys. Thanks so much for joining me, as always. Have a great night and weekend. Bye, friends.